That's actually the wrong Robert Cook. That's <laughs> kind of hilarious. That, in fact, by the way, one of the reasons I started MetaWeb is because of this Robert Cook. My name is very common. This is a famous computer scientist from Pixar. Um, I've met him once. The universe did not end when that happened. Um, we'll just move along. So <laughs> he's more famous than I am, but maybe I'll be infamous. Um, so. As Dale pointed out, I used to do software. I've done software for about 30 years. So in some sense, I'm an outsider here. Um, but I'm feeling more included now. Um, what, what I'm going to give here is sort of a progress report. I'm about 18 months into learning about hardware. And like the red pill from uh, the Matrix, uh, the transition from the virtual to the physical is kind of a leap of faith. And I've learned a bunch of things along the way. Um, a lot of them are pretty enlightening, and I think that people like me who are so, go from software going to hardware is a fairly common trend. So this picture is, um, I, I used to make computer games in the Apple II a long, long time ago. Um, this game is called Gumball. It's obscure. A friend of mine once said, um, I think channeling Yogi Berra, that Robert, all of your games are known for their obscurity. And I think that's <laughs> one of the reasons I got out of it. But the point is, is that uh, the Apple II, and I think people have repeated over and over again about the early Apple II days, and I think there's something poignant there, is that the early Apple II days were like invention. People were creating software, they were sharing information, there was the West Coast Computer Fair. It had a feeling of something big was about to happen, and it did. Um, who knew? And I went on and did other things, I got a computer science degree, which didn't destroy me too badly, and I ended up, as, as Dale pointed out, creating a company that started something called Freebase, which is a, a big database, a kind of structured Wikipedia of practical knowledge. And one of the things that happened, like any good geek, I started getting into the data that was in Freebase itself. So I started getting fascinated with materials and with electronics and, and consumer products. And ultimately, Google bought this. And I, at that point, I was, I want to work on hardware. And that was two years ago, and it took me another six months to figure that out. And for a long time, I've been a geek in lighting. And one of the things I've noticed over the last decade or so is that LEDs are just getting better and better. And at some point in the very near future, lines are going to cross and everything is going to be LEDs. Now, these are retrofits to existing sockets, which is great. There's huge um, energy advantages and sort of lifetime expectancy of these things is going to go way up. But for me, it was kind of missing the point of suddenly having a form of lighting that wasn't hot and it wasn't omnidirectional, so that you could, well, um, <laughs> I have a limited time, but the point is, is that um, I wanted to build lighting that was in different form factors, that you can control the colors and, and the, the sort of time dynamics of it. So I built some prototypes. I opened an office in, in Oakland. This is an early prototype of a grid of LEDs that are individually controllable. This is a cylindrical one that was playing very slow moving video on top of it. And the idea is to create a kind of ambient light. Um, but you could actually sculpt the light in the way like a high-end hotel or a high-end um, uh, restaurant would, except the economics change so you could do it at home in an office. There are three disciplines I had to get good at. Software I already had, electronics I had some experience, and physical design I had absolutely none. Um, the Arduino was a dream. What that did is it created a bridge between uh, software and hardware. I didn't have to learn hardware because of it. And the ramp up time was about an hour. And I've seen this happen again and again with software people. Um, we ended up using um, uh, this one, Embed. But actually, now that the Dewey is coming out, I think we'll switch to that. Um, electronics. So there were three things we had to figure out. Um, what are the devices out there, the GSM chips, the Wi-Fi chips, and things like that? All of those things are all surface mount, and we had to figure out how to get those onto PC boards. So fortunately, there's this great ecosystem. There's all these companies, and there's all these communities out here. SparkFun, Adafruit, those two really helped out a lot. SparkFun, in particular, with the surface mount problems, they gave all these great tutorials. Don't be afraid. Go do it. Ultimately, in the right-hand corner, lower right-hand corner, use a, an electric skillet to melt your solder. Brilliant idea, it works. And they were very open and honest about how that works. I used another tool called Eagle PCB that people have mentioned and had circuit boards made and they were delivered from China a few days later. It was amazing, right? I had to etch my first one when I was 15. Um, physical design, by far the hardest thing for us to do. Fortunately, I co-located myself right next to a hackerspace in Oakland called Ace Monster Toys, filled with people who are software people going into hardware. 
um, and they had a wood shop and a laser cutter and just lots of expertise that were very helpful. Um, this TV show I watched with my two young kids. It's amazing. I, it sounds crazy. This gave me an appreciation for the industrial stack beneath us and also just practical information and how to cast things and, and work with carbon fiber and such. Um, and these filled in my vocational background, totally invaluable. Now I know how to work with metals. This, and I want to just focus on this for a second. So this is a 3D CAD program called Rhino. And the reason I use Rhino um, is, so doing the 3D stuff is fun. I can write code in something called Grasshopper. Grasshopper is a visual programming language. It's kind of insane if you have a computer science degree, but it's incredibly powerful. And what it means is I can create a prototype in code. I can render it out of my CNC. If it doesn't work, I tweak a couple of parameters and run it again. It's this fast prototyping that Andrew Philo was referring to yesterday. Incredibly powerful. And of course, this is a the unboxing. This is a Vishal, who's my assistant. We just unboxed our, our uh, shop bot. The amazing thing, the shop bot is to physical design and physical stuff what Arduino was to me as a, as a programmer. And what I mean by that is I don't know how to do woodworking. I don't know how to do all these craftsman types of things. So like the Arduino, it, it helped me avoid having to learn all that stuff. I'll probably go backfill a lot of it. But this thing is amazing. It's the most fun I've had with any device since my Apple II from 30 years ago. Go buy one. No. Um, so some quick observations for what I've seen so far in the last 18 months. Um, the openness that people keep talking about, this open information accelerated it. I wouldn't be here right now if I didn't have SparkFun, Adafruit, and all those other people on the list. Um, hardware is going through what software did 30 years ago. And by that, what I mean is, like the Apple II, there's this transition happening. Yesterday outside, when I saw three different 3D printer makers, it reminded me of the 70s with Altair, Imsi, and so on, um, all, all uh, and Apple, all peddling their stuff. A couple of them really succeeded. One of you guys is probably going to end up becoming the next Apple of manufacturing. Who knows? Um, and so for me, this acceleration that's about to happen, like, the, like 30 years ago, but in hardware, is something I wanted to be a part of. So that's why I'm here. Thank you.